What's up, fellers? Uh, Brad the Guitologist here with another stupendous interweb video for you. Uh, this is a late 60s or early 1970s trainer custom special. This is a really awesome amp. Uh, it's a total beast. Heavy as shit. Really huge. Big transformers. Awesome sound. And we're going to get into it post haste. All right, the model number on this is a YBA3. Uh, the BA on trainer amps, if you didn't know, usually uh, indicates it's a bass amp. Uh, we are going to uh, use this for guitar, or at least we're going to set it up for use as guitar, and we may do some slight modifications to, um, you know, to kind of maximize it for guitar. Uh, so we'll go through a schematic and everything also and see what might need to be done uh, for that purpose. Uh, but we can see here the controls. We have a standby indicator light, an operation light, standby switch. We have a boost normal. Uh, that's a bass boost, rather, for normal and boosted bass. Presence control, bass expander, bass control, treble, treble expander, volume control, and treble boost. And a master volume, which is pretty handy. Already has a master volume. Okay, here is the back of this amplifier. Uh, we can see we're missing the uh, bar uh, here, which protects the tubes while in transit. Not a huge deal. We could probably make one of those fairly easily, and which we might do. Um, but you can see here we have three preamp tubes uh, and four EL34 output tubes. So we're going to make sure while we're in here that this was properly biased for these EL. Uh, 34s that you know they, they took care of all that. I can see here we have the original Mallory uh, can capacitors still at least in the amp. We may check out those and see if they're still good. If they are we may leave them. Uh, if not or if they're questionable we will go ahead and replace. But just look at the size of that transformer right there. I mean you want to know where a lot of the tone comes from with trainer amps. Look at the Look at the mass of that transformer. That sucker goes way back in there. <laughs> That's huge. And I've had other trainers on this channel before, and, and I'm not surprised by this, but uh, you know anybody who's seen any uh, Marshalls or Fenders around, you know that this is, this is more massive uh, than pretty much anything they used. And look at the size of the output transformer. I mean, you want to talk about bass response? in the output that sucker is gonna bring it but uh... let's see what let's see what we got in the preamp tubes just for that it looks like rubies yep, that's a ruby 12ax7 oh another note if you guys are um, for some of you newbies uh... you see this little notch right here some tube sockets have a little notch like this and what that's indicating that's indicating where you're uh, space is supposed to go so if your notch is over here you'll want to turn your space over there if it's in front of me like it is here you want to turn that space facing it and that gives you a guide where that space is supposed to go so if you if any of you were ever wondering about that sometimes it's hard to get these nine pin tubes in and out of amps easily uh, another ruby right there and these are probably okay in this amp. They're probably, you know, I mean, I'm sure there are other way better tubes we could use. But uh, let's see, that's a that's a JJ right there. And I'm assuming this is a phase inverter. Uh, so we might experiment with taking this JJ and moving it over to the V1 position uh, just for the hell of it. We might swap these tubes around when we come to demo it just, to, just for the hell of it. See which one sounds best in the V1. Um, a lot of people don't bother to do that. Uh, we, you see this white thing back here, that circular thing, that's a fan. Uh, it's kind of an odd fan. The shape of it at least is odd. Uh, but this is how they were in trainers. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get the... Whoops, wrong way. Uh, I was going to say let's get the guts open. We, we didn't even look at the back panel. Uh, you can see there it's a custom special model YBA3 manufactured by Yorkville. Um, two speaker outs, AC and ground. The ground will be 
pretty much useless after we're done because we're going to add a three prong cord. Uh, we have a circuit breaker rather than a fuse. Uh, we have an accessory plug here and that's pretty much it other than the serial number which if you guys are curious there's the serial number on it. It doesn't tell me anything. I'm sure it won't tell you much either. Let's go ahead and get the uh, top off this thing and we'll look at the guts. Uh, trainers are interesting because they have a weird way of getting into the guts and all you have to do is just remove four screws on the top and once those screws are out uh, all you have to do is just lift up on the top of the thing the whole top comes off allowing you access direct access uh, to the guts which is extremely convenient um, trainer um, in, in my mind, it's, it's really about the best there is at uh, understanding the plight of the lowly repairman. Um, they make it really easy to get inside of their amps, and they've thought about some things with their cabinetry that indicates they're giving a, a mind toward uh, easy repair, like out on the road. So yeah, inside this amp we could see uh, we have all the original larger power capacitors, uh, in addition to the two Mallory's underneath. Um, as a matter of fact, this, this is a hundred percent original, I would say. I don't even see where they did anything really to change the, uh, they may have, they may have adjusted the bias, but I don't see anything else to indicate they've done any kind of modifications at all. Um, we can see here with these yellow mustard capacitors are very similar to the ones you'll find in Marshall amps. All of these uh, electrolytics will probably be changed as well, these smaller ones. And we'll just go through it and uh, change all the usual suspects, uh, clean all the potentiometers, um, clean all of the jacks, uh, all the usual stuff. And then at the end of this, I think we're going to have a really kick-ass sound and amp. We might do some mods on the way. One other thing I wanted to mention while I'm thinking about it is, uh, you know, you watchers of my channel um, who aren't that familiar with, uh, you know, modifying electronics or working on this stuff, but uh, you should at least be able to get a feel for how this thing is constructed. I mean, you can see here how all of the um, all of the sockets are direct mounted to the chassis and not on some board. Uh, the board is laid out in a very uh, logical way very much like uh, fenders are laid out you don't have a whole lot of spaghetti wiring flying every which direction you know back and forth across the amp you basically have wires running from a spot uh, up and over to where it goes um, and you know not taking some circuitous route uh, and everything uh, is very well laid out you got the power on this end and not ever you don't you don't have a lot of things crisscrossing each other um, and it's very it's going to be very easy to modify this and service this um, without too much hassle this is the kind of thing if you're going out on a world tour uh, this is the kind of thing you really want um, if you don't you know if, if the tone is not to your liking necessarily you can jack this thing up and get it real clean and use your pedals or you know use whatever your racks but this could be taking care of a lot of your uh, your power and this thing will be a, a freaking tank on the road. You're not, I mean, you're not going to have to service this probably. There's a video, there's videos online. I may uh, link to it right now where they uh, push these off of uh, the tops of buildings to make sure that they All right, work. is everyone ready? The crowd is ready. The trainer is ready. Okay. You ready? Now we replace the tubes, plug it in and see if it works. It will work. It will work with this. All right, I gotta see this. Come on, let's place it. I think, I think it will live. Yep. It's alive! <laughs>
right, here's the schematic for this thing. We're just going to look at it uh, kind of briefly. Uh, we'll zoom in here on the input. Uh, we can see right off, here's the treble expander, and it's tied to a to an RC network kind of down here, which is kind of weird. So it takes off between V1B and V2A, and... Uh, yeah, that's really it's really an interesting thing. And it's tied around back over on the other side of V2A. So pretty interesting there. I guess what that's doing is that's trimming some... It's kind of hard for me to tell exactly what's going on, but it looks like it's passing through some highs. So it's kind of trimming some of the highs off and redirecting them maybe to ground with the with the help of the of this 250k pot so it's interesting to say the least and then you have the base expander which is over here uh, in this part between before and after V2B so that's interesting too and then you have the base boost switch as well and you have a treble boost switch over here uh, just on paper, this thing looks like, you know, it obviously wasn't built for guitar. Um, we've got a lot of filtering, for one. Um, we have an 80 microfarad in series with two 40s that are themselves in parallel. Um, we have a couple bleeder resistors here. Um, but these two in series... Well, these three in series, this one and then these two in parallel together make 80. So it's 80 and 80 in series. Uh, so in total, you've got, you know, over over 900 volts of power handling right here. Um, you don't really need to be quite that high. It needs to be above 540 volts because that's what we have at this point. Uh, maybe a little bit more now even. Um, but anything over 540 should be fine. But, uh, you know, in series, you've got a total of 40 microfarads, basically, uh, right there. Um, the same here. You have a total of 40 microfarads between all three of these um, at this point. Um, and also, it gives you a handy way to, uh, to bias the amplifier. Uh, there's a little note here. Uh, right here a little triangle and then the triangular note says to adjust the R8A and that's your bias adjustment right here so you would adjust this pot until you see 8 volts let's see until you see 8 volts DC of drop across the R30 1K resistor this resistor right here which is a screen resistor I think that's the that's let me see is that handling all four of those screens it's definitely handling two of them but it wants you to adjust until you get eight volts of, of drop across this resistor so that's that's an easy way to bias where you're not having to do a lot of calculations and if you're out on the road and you don't have a scope and all that kind of stuff and you're not biasing it that way um, that just gives you a real simple easy way to do that which is kind of cool another you know just another example of how um, Trainer was thinking about the repairman and thinking about the conditions under which a repairman might be working, you know. Uh, somebody who's uh, out traveling with a band maybe and he has to fix this amp right before a show or right in the middle of a show, God forbid, and they have to wait for the guy to fix it and he has to pop in some new tubes and do a quick bias adjustment. Pops off the top with four screws and puts his probe across that resistor right there and uh, measures... And adjusts and he's done so that I mean that he could do that during a break so really cool uh, but what we're gonna probably gonna do on this is adjust the um, we're probably gonna adjust the uh, filtering somewhat I don't have any 80 microfarad on hand but I do have some 100s at 350 volts which is gonna give us 700 volts um, and uh, 50 microfarads which should be fine uh, 700 volts power handling is more than enough, and 50 microfarads is about what you, you know, it's about right for that first 
uh, nodes. So we're going to use two of those right there. Um, and over here we will probably do, we might just end up doing the same right there as well. So 200s and 200s will replace all six of those. All right, I guess the best way to start here is devise a plan on where we're going to mount these these new caps. And the new caps are much smaller than these old caps. These modern caps are a hell of a lot smaller on average. Um, so it's going to free up a, just a lot of real estate. Um, we have a bolt right here and a bolt right here that are part of the transformer mounts that we're going to use, I think, to mount our terminals on. So, uh, yeah, let's get some terminals and mount those up. Well, this is interesting. Look at this. Uh, over here on the chassis, there was a blob of silicon holding on this this big uh, capacitor like that, and it all came off in one piece, which is uh, which is nice. Uh, but look, the only place with any rust anywhere on the chassis is where right there where that silicon was. All right, we have these uh, main capacitors done over here, um, so all that's ready. Uh, now we've got to do the this big capacitor over here, and we're going to remove it and actually um, mount the new one to this little terminal right here and just run a short ground wire. We'll just clip this ground wire off and just connect it to this point, and we'll be connected to two points, but that'll just be ensuring that we're not getting uh, you know, any resistance between those two points to creating kind of ground loops. Okay, another note on this one, um, I've changed the value from an 80 microfarad uh, to a 47 microfarad. The reason is, uh, this, is on, uh, this is on the preamp, uh, so it's kind of on down the line already. There's a lot of filtering by the time it gets to this point. Uh, so I think 47 is probably going to be more than ac adequate for a, a guitar amp. So uh, we're just going to roll with this and see if we can get this off in one piece like we did the other one. I wonder if there'll be any rust under this part. All right, so there we are with all the large power capacitors uh, replaced. Uh, this one, also another note on this, um, I've done my best to keep that as far away from uh, these larger resistors as possible so as not to cook it. Um, and these other ones I've hidden under here, those are the bleed resistors uh, that were over here. I was able to just clip out the existing ones and move them over to here so that that's a good way of doing it. I think if I ever get another one of these I'll probably do it pretty much the same way. Uh, now on to these other electrolytics. Uh, we'll replace those and then we'll probably clean all the sockets or excuse me clean the sockets, clean the pots, input jacks, uh, all that good stuff and then um, fire it up and see where we are uh, at that point and kind of give it a bit of a test and then see if we want to do any kind of modifications or tweaking. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, assume uh, that I'm going to need to do at least one mod, and that's uh, replace this bypass capacitor, which was in this position right here, and it's the bypass capacitor uh, for V1, I believe, for the first stage of V1. Um, and I'm going to replace it instead of a 220 microfarad at 25 volts. I'm going to replace this with something closer to like a to like a Marshall um, sort of value. This is this is more basement-ish in in uh, in value. Uh, if you look at some of the basement uh, on the first stage, their bypass capacitors were in this range, kind of 220 microfarad. And we're going to replace this to something way lower, uh, more closer to a Marshall, so that we can. Um, basically not have so much low end uh, going through the rest of the amp. Well, and just to be clear, whenever I say Marshall, um, you know, I mean some of the later Marshalls, like from the 80s, uh, that were a little bit higher gain and had, some, and had tighter bass. Uh, some of the earlier ones were pretty much, um, pretty much basement clones, more or less anyway. This is a JTM uh, 100 1959T uh, super lead and this one as you can see uh, did have a 250 microfarad capacitor on this uh, first uh, tube also uh, very much like the basement and I think uh, let's see let me back up here 
Here is the JTM 45. And we can see its first stage here as well it has a 250 microfarad. Uh, same, same down here on this uh, other channel. So, you know, when I say Marshall, I mean like kind of some of the later Marshalls um, with um, uh, like the, from the JCM 800 or the JMP kind of series. For example, here is the uh, the model 2204, which is the 50 watt version of the JCM 800 or JMP, basically the same amp. Um, but here on the first stage, as we could see, uh, here are our inputs, uh, V1, and we have uh, two different stages here V on the, the V1 tube, and they have their own separate uh, cathode resistor and capacitor. And we will probably do something very, very much like the input stage on this amplifier. Uh, but as you can see, we have a 330 uh, right here, and that's on the low input. On the high input, however, which is the one uh, most people use... Uh, who are into you know that Marshall sound? This is uh, a very very small capacitor by comparison. This is a 0.68. Uh, we can replace it with something close to that. Uh, and also we have a 2700 um, bias resistor uh, here. Uh, so you know we're gonna do something definitely different on this on this amp to get it closer to this. Let's just go back to the trainer schematic for just a second and I'll show you what I mean about uh, the inputs of a lot of these amps being virtually the same. Uh, whoop, let's see, let's get this zoomed in. Uh, here's the input. We have a 68K resistor that the signal passes through. Uh, we have a 470K uh, grid leak resistor. That's what this resistor is called as a grid leak resistor because it's going from the grid of the tube to ground. Uh, this 68K is a, called a grid stopper, um, particularly if it's tied directly to the grid itself, but that's essentially what it is. It's a grid stopping resistor. Uh, this grid stopper is 68K. We have a 470K resistor right here, which is, you know, about, about a half of a meg. Uh, and we'll see here the 820 ohm a bias resistor and also a 250 uh a microfarad bypass capacitor. Now, uh, if we remember those values and go back to our uh, JTM45 again, Marshall, uh, we have 68K grid stopping resistors, but we have a 1 meg um, grid leak resistor. So basically what they've done is they said the signal is going, oh, that's is a very unappealing path to ground, basically, and you're biasing the tube uh basically hotter um, and what we have here is a 250 microfarad bypass capacitor once again very uh, virtually the same uh, and an 820 um, ohm resistor so those are virtually the same uh, if we move along to the backward in time to the basement 5f6 which is where Marshall first got its uh, inspiration You'll see the similarities once again. We have 68K here, uh, but we have 1 meg here. Okay, so that's different than our trainer. If we go back to our trainer, and you'll recall, we had a 470K. So this is going to be a little bit less, it's going to be a little tamer. Of course, this is for bass, and uh, he meant it for bass. Uh, and this is a 12AX7 also, whereas the baseman uh, was a 12AY7. So this was going to have lower gain to begin with. So to, to give it a little bit more gain, they used a 1 meg. A lot, what a lot of people ended up doing is sticking 12AX7s in their basement. And that's why it became a rock machine instead of a bass amp. Uh, as, if you'll recall from my re other recent video. Uh, but on this basement, you'll notice once again, we have the 250 um, microfarad bypass capacitor and the 820 ohm bias resistor. So they're virtually the same. So essentially what we're going to do is we are going to change on this trainer, we're going to change this uh, resistor to a 1 meg instead of the 470. We're going to change this 820 ohm bias resistor to a 2.7K and we're going to change this to something more like a 0.68K that we are seeing on the later uh, 
you know, real rock and roll uh, Marshalls, uh, the JCM 800 and JMP series. Okay, we're firing this thing up for the first time uh, after the service. Uh, I'm using this 8 ohm speaker. That's the cool thing about trainers, they actually use a sensible 8 ohm output. Um, but I want to show you something. Uh, you hear all this noise. And we're not even dialed all the way up. We're I mean, we're only at 66 volts. We're only halfway up. So you can imagine the amount of noise. If I uh, if I went ahead and dialed this thing all the way up on the Variac and cranked the volume. But I wanted to show you something about noise and the importance of shielding. Um, check this out. Now you'll notice if I put my hand over here on this area this is the area where my uh, input is this whole area are inputs and here is the first V1 tube right here so just blocking the light with my hand from the input basically casting a shadow onto the input area takes that much noise away isn't that amazing how much noise is taken away by just simple shielding. It doesn't really have as big of an effect anywhere else until you get over here to the input. Pretty cool. Okay, so just to recap, all that was done. Uh, we changed this 470k uh, grid leak resistor to a one meg. Uh, changed this 820 ohm bias resistor on this stage to a uh, 2700 change this bypass capacitor to a 0.68 uh, like we see on the uh, Marshall 2204 or JCM 800 series in general 2203s also um, we changed this bias resistor to a uh, 1k Moving through to the next stage, I change this bias resistor to a 1.5K, change this bypass capacitor to a, a 100 microfarad, and those are pretty much uh, the mods that were done. Uh, we also changed the filtering, uh, which I suppose is a, is a mod also. Um, we changed these to a 100 and a 100, and this one to a 100 and a 100, and we changed this 80 microfarad uh, to a 47 microfarad. So those are pretty much all of the uh, changes that were made. We also um, biased this thing. It was way off on the bias. Um, we weren't anywhere near this negative 50 volts. Uh, so I biased, biased this correctly. When I first fired up the amp, that you could just smell the tubes. You could smell it that it was just running hot. And I checked this, and sure enough, uh, this this was way off. So we uh, we rebiased the amp, uh, got it closer to where it's supposed to be. I measured everything, also, of course, and um, we're we're dissipating uh, every. It's dissipating within spec now on the output. So yeah, let's give this thing a listen and uh, see what uh, she sounds like. <laughs>
All right, that concludes our video on this uh, 19, early 1970s Trainer YBA3 Custom Special. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please hit the subscribe button, and for now, y'all take care.